Hi everyone, in today's video, we are going to go through the file append command, which allows you to create or append to an existing file, as well as loop files command, which allows you to loop through files and folders inside a folder of your choice. So if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. So let's get started. And we we're first going to go through the file append command first. I have already briefly explained you how this works. So let me just quickly run through them and move on to the next one. So in order to create a file, which doesn't exist in the folder that you specify here, as well as the file name and the extension and text file is the most simple file format that you can create. You can create other types of files, but I don't recommend you to other than CSV and text. And this is the value that goes into that file that you're going to create. And so if I bring up the folder where this file is going to be created and run it, then it's going to create a test text file. If I open it, then I'm going to see that value that I have added in my first parameter there. And if the file does exist already, and if I run this again, then it's just going to append that same value onto the next line because there's a line break here. So that's how you use the file append command. You can also create a CSV file. Like I said, CSV file is good because you can do mass data storage inside this file format, as well as have different columns, not just the rows. So, uh, so this is the first line that I'm going to uh, add to my CSV file that I'm going to create and that's the line break. So this will put my focus onto the next row for the next string of text that I'm going to add and backtick and comma is the separator or delimiter for the column. So if you put in the backtick and comma, it's going to move on to the next column as well as the next row. So next row, next column. And this backtick is required in this instance because commas are used for moving on to the next parameter in a command. And therefore, if you don't put in the backtick, if you don't put in the escape sequence with a comma, then it's it's going to think that this is another whole new parameter that you have provided. So you've got to put in the backtick if you want to add a value to a CSV file in this manner. And this is the second line. And this second line is going to be added into the second row, the second column. And then there's another line break. So we're going to move on to the third row. And in the third row, we're going to add that. And this time we're going to add that into the first column because we don't have a comma like that. So if I go ahead and run it, this is going to create the CSV file. And, and we're going to see the data laid out in the manner that I have just spelled out or explained to you. So we're going to have that first line in the first row and first column and the second value in the second row and the second column and then the third value in the first column and third row. All right, so that's that. And if I move on to the next one, it will be attempting to create an Excel file and this you should be able to open it, but I'll probably get an error. And let's see what we get. You're trying to open Excel's different form and specify the file extension. So you're going to get an error. Um, I could open it, but I think the problem is if I type something on and try to save it, it's going to make me try and save it as a different file or maybe not. Uh, save yes. Okay, so it tries to ask me to save it as a different format. But if I just save it and get out, and it's going to give me all these warning messages with the string value that I added did get saved. But I advise you not to create files using file append command for file formats other than text and CSV. And then any file as well, you can use um, and create an any file in this manner. But in one of my future videos, I'm going to show you a method as to how you can create and modify and delete any files, which is going to be done in a more proper manner than this one. You can't, you shouldn't be using file append for any files. Um, what I was going to show you just now was doc. Doc actually does work. Doc is the, the uh, Microsoft Word document 
2003 or before right so if i open it up then i'll see that value being having been added into my word document however if you do doc x that's not gonna work because because it's gonna give me that a uh, format error because the problem with the contents it says it's not gonna be able to read that data that i have added inside the doc x file so just use this with text file and csv or whatever else you find it's possible to use with and so what i'm going to show you next is you can create a multi-line uh, or you can add multiple line data inside uh, the text file or csv file as and when you try to create or append to an existing file as well as user variable this is called continuation section and it improves readability and maintainability so this variable here is the variable i'm going to store a random string called my line and i'm going to use the file append command obviously and then put a comma move on to the next line put in a parenthesis close the parenthesis here and then add in three lines where in the second line i'm going to add that variable so that is going to be replaced with my line like that later on if i want to go ahead and run it and that is the path to the file which just now has been created if i open it up and i will see that data has been appended and the file created in this manner okay so you can also do the same with csv files and perhaps you're going to find uh, adding data to a csv file in this manner a lot better because you can see for example add a string of text and then move on to the next column in this panel you don't need a back tick here because you're inside uh, parentheses like that and so in the second value uh, or in the second column in the first row I'm adding column 2 as my string and then the third column column 3 and then here I'm moving on to the next row because there's a line break here and then I'm adding that in the first column and my variable in the second column and column 3 is going to have column 3 and this is going to be the third row etc etc so if I go ahead and run it then I am going to see this uh, CSV file being created and the data laid out in the manner I expected it to. And so let me try and append to the existing CSV file. But uh, probably what I want to do is put in another line break here because otherwise it's just going to append to the existing data. So if I don't add a new line break and then run it. What this is going to do is it's going to probably append the new set of data to at the end of where I have left off. This is the end of where I have left off. So I can see the first value being appended to here and then the next column, the next column. And I'll start in the new row in the first from the first column and etc. etc. So you should probably add in a new line. And then if I run it again, then the new set of data, which is going to be these three, are going to be, or these nine cells, are going to be added nicely in the next row available. And you can, obviously, instead of using a continuation section, you can just do a, uh, remove all of this and just create, say, for example, my data variable and go my data and then paste that in and that's going to do exactly the same thing now the final bit of file append is how you can add a foreign text to a text file if you try to add this string which is to say hello in korean without specifying the encoding if i go ahead and run that I'm not going to get that Korean text printed. Instead, I'm going to get question marks or broken characters, garbled characters instead. And so what you have to do is, let me just go ahead and delete this. You have to go in the lot, in the next parameter, UTF-8 or 16, whichever one fits you. If I go ahead and run this and open it up, then I'm going to see the Korean text being added successfully like that alternatively you can remove this and make your script underneath this command to adopt utf8 all the time so if i delete this um, and run it again then i'm gonna see that text being printed 
All right, so this is the file append command and let us move on to loop files command. And in order to go through or, or go through all the files inside the folder, let's say this folder, you use that loop comma file. So up until this point, it's all gonna be all the same. And then you have this bit where you provide the path of the folder and this star sign is necessary. It's a wildcard, so it's gonna loop through all the files and files only if we put in f only files inside that folder and because it's a loop it's going to go through every single one one by one inside that folder and it's going to grab the file name and then add that to my variable called folder name so if i go ahead and run this at the end i'm going to see the list of all the file names inside my folder there are a whole bunch of other things that you can uh, grab from each of the files and these are all the attributes they're pretty self-explanatory so i'm not going to go through all of them and if you want to look at the descriptions of these attributes then you can go to this url link to find out what they are but you basically get the extension path there's a variation of the path and then you get the time modified created accessed and sized etc etc so if i go run this then this time i'm going to loop through individual files one by one and list out all the attributes that I have listed out inside my script like that one by one. If you want to retrieve file names sorted by your name in alphabetical order, so this I think it actually does sort it so I get G and then T um, but if in that case if you if in the in a case where you don't get the files sorted out in alphabetical order what you can do is you can use the sort command and sort the file list and then display that later so uh, that's basically gonna give me the same results but if it doesn't do it already for you then this is a script that you can utilize and instead if you want to uh, sort it by say modification date then you can use the same methodology and add the file time modified in the beginning of the string for the file list and so when you sort that using the sort command because the sort command will sort by alphabetical order by default it's going to put the oldest time modified at the top and the newest time modified at the bottom and therefore if i go ahead and run this then i'm gonna see the numbers like that and as you can probably see if you look closely this is sorted by the oldest to the newest and from this point on you can probably can use like a substring to take this bit out and just leave these file names in your variable if you want to look through all the files but just the files that have a specific extension for example dot auto hockey you can use this method which is to put in a asterisk and then go dot auto key or dot text etc etc and so if i go ahead and run it then i'm just gonna grab the names of the files that have the auto key extension if you want to uh loop through all the files and rename them into a different name you can use a script like this or methodology like this and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a folder in here and i'm also going to take a screenshot of something random like that and go and grab that from here and then add it to my new folder paste it and then create a few copies and what i'm going to do is i'm going to rename this into uh, something else using this script and so this folder you see here is that so the folder path will have the value to the path to the folder you see on the right and i'm doing a loop files folder path everything inside it and just the files and so this this is all the same i'm getting the file list and here i'm doing a substring to remove the last line break because it gets added at the end of the iterations of the loop and i'm sorting that you don't have to sort that if you don't want to um, probably best not to sort that because you will get the list of files and you will have probably in mind how you want to name them so i'll just leave that out and uh, maybe I can try and run this and show you what I get when I run this and that's the list of file 
names that I get, which is going to match that if I sort it by the name. Um, and then when I do this, uh, loop pass here by file list uh, with the delimiter or separator being the line feed, I use the file move command, which I have shown you in a, one of the previous videos. And that's the original file name. So the first iteration of the loop will have that value in this variable or in this part of the file move command. And then that is a new name I'm going to give. And it's basically a, a dot PNG file, which has a, a index, which is going to be a number that represents the nth iteration of the loop. So the first file is going to be changed to number one, second one, number two, and third one, number three, and so on and so forth. So if I go ahead and run this, then I'm going to get the message box. If I press OK on the message box, then I'm going to get these files uh, names changed to some other file names. So that's how you can rename files in a bulk. And if you want to loop through folders instead of just the files, then what you can do, let me just delete this folder, create a new one, create a few new ones. You use the D for the options or the mode. And if I go ahead and run this, then I get the list of folder names only. If you want to do both files and directories or folders, then you just put in an F here that I'm going to get the file names and the folder names printed out like that. So the file names would have extensions, um, whereas the directories won't. And if you want to recurse into the subfolders, you can put in an R and recurse means basically uh, you are going into these subfolders and looking at the content. So let me just go ahead and create something. Microsoft Office Word document in here. So without the R, if I run this, it's not going to be able to capture that new Microsoft Office Word document in my message box, which represents my variable. And so if you put in the R here, then you're going to be able to pick that up as well because you're doing a recurse into the subfolders. This is it for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.